Throughout our lives, we all had people who influenced us greatly in our careers or in our business. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. What I've got for you today is a short interview uh, that I had with Howard Worch, and he's got a practice out in Dauphin, Manitoba, which is a very rural area of Manitoba. And he's going to talk about the people who influenced him uh, throughout his life and his career and all of that. And so I would appreciate that you stay tuned to the end because I've got a little bit more comments that I want to add to Howard's thoughts on the people who were of influence to him. So stay tuned. We're going to see you in a few seconds. Tell me about maybe three, and you can expand on less or more people, but three people who were probably the greatest influence in your career as being an accountant. So whether in practice or just being an accountant, like yeah. uh, we were talking a little bit about this morning, how you came into public practice. And I thought that story was kind of interesting. Yeah, well, um, I didn't initially, well, let's talk about the, the, the influencers. One of the influencers, and I can't leave it with three, so uh, you'll have to forgive me for that. But uh, one of the influencers was actually um, a, a fellow named Peter Rampton. He was a CGA at the time. And I was a student and I knew Peter through, um, through Connections in Dauphin. And he's no longer here, but his family's still here. And he came up to me personally and said, good on you for getting into the CGA program. You're going to do well. You're going to love this. And that has stuck with me through my studies, for sure. <laughs> I have not had business relationship with him, not even a personal relationship, but that encouragement very early on, huge. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Um, so that, there's one. Uh, George Allard, of course. George was my accountant in business before. Uh, okay. So, so great story there. Uh, so George um, would come into my shop. I had a bike and ski shop, a sporting goods shop. He'd come into my shop and, you know, he had kids that were into the things and himself, an active guy. And one day he came in and I was on, my, on the phone with a former employee, um, this young fellow who uh, I was a bit of a mentor to and had phoned me for advice. And George couldn't help himself but overhear this conversation. And I was giving whatever advice at the time, which I thought was sage advice. <laughs> and uh, so afterwards, remarkably, George said, that was interesting. I couldn't help but overhear that. I could use someone like that on my team, like you on my team. And I tucked that in the back of my mind and I closed down my business for economic reasons. And uh, when I got into the CGA program in 1996, by the way, Early in 97, I approached George and I said, do you remember that conversation? Um, I'm looking for a job. Would you hire me? And he said, you know what? I've got somebody that's not sure he's going to work out the rest of the tax season. Why don't I put you on half time? Mm -hmm. You can work the afternoons. He works the mornings. Well, that the rest is history. I worked through the firm since day one, all through the ranks, got my CP, CGA designation, and then eventually that turned into C, CPA. And then eventually got the opportunity to join the partnership and now partners with George and now he's retiring. So yeah. that's full circle. So how could I not mention George? Yeah. I mean, but you also mentioned this morning that you were thinking of heading more into the corporate world than you can well, yeah. so morphed you. into public practice. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, that was, that was interesting because in my studies, the management accounting was my thing. I loved that type of analysis of accounting and, and cost accounting. And it seemed to just click for me. And I thought, maybe that's where I'll end up. I had no idea what people did in a public practice firm other than from my end as a business owner. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, I'm going to try this and see how I like it. I didn't have any clue how much I would like it. And being a business owner, I knew I wanted part of the ownership at some point. I, day one. It was like, I knew... I want to, I had the skills, first of all, and, and had owned a business myself. So I, I wanted, I, I wanted that and eventually was given that opportunity. So, but had I, had you 
asked me when I walked into the door whether I'd love this, I'd say, no, I'm going to do it for a couple of years and see how it works out. <laughs> and I absolutely, because of the variety and mostly the people that you meet. Yeah, yeah. And it just works for me. Yeah, and I think if you're going to be in practice, yeah. you got to be a person who loves people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, people who influenced you. So, George... Um, Peter Rampton, and then, um, well, jean I have to say you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I think over the years of us getting to know one another, one of the key factors is just your passion for the profession, your passion for practice, and how inspired I felt when I met you. And, um, and then we got to know each other better, and we share that, I believe. Yes. And... Um, yeah, just a unique approach, and 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 there's not many people in life you're unique in that way, and and so you've made a huge impression on me. I aspire to the lofty goals that you have set out. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever achieve them, but that's okay. Uh, the, the fact that you inspire me, and so you're one of the definite people uh, out there. Another person that. I cannot go without saying, and I believe you share this with me, is a, a man named Stephen Rosenfield. Okay. <laughs> Stephen, if anyone has met Stephen, is a unique and great, beautiful human being. And that's all I need to say. He has inspired me. When I went into public practice, in those days, CGA had starting your own CGA practice and some of those sessions that you would take, mm -hmm. mandatory, but very good sessions. Yeah. I take the knowledge of some of that to the day. And Stephen taught one of the sessions, I think it was starting your own C CGA practice or one, of, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But one of the, he stood up there and for the first five minutes, he starts talking about valuing yourself and your billing and what you're worth. Yeah. It wasn't about the material. It started with that, and he blew my, my mind. This was much before I had met you, even. Okay. And he just started talking about and, and giving examples, and it's like, oh, my God, I have no idea. I have such a low value of myself and what I'm worth. <laughs> and from that, it all, I think it started that. And, and as many practitioners that have met him or friends that have met Stephen, um, he's done things for and one of his sessions, I took over teaching the Gap Gas course because that's okay. what he did. I think that's yeah. the course that I went to. But anyway, um, that was back in the old CGA days, um, the standards course. Yeah. And Stephen was talking about technology. and He's a techno weenie and would spend all this money on it. <laughs> and then I was, at that time, I didn't have a smartphone. And in, in those days, BlackBerry was the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, he talks about having this Blackberry, and I said, oh, I'd love to get a Blackberry, you know, I didn't have one or whatever. <laughs> Next thing you know, I get back to Dauphin, and I get this package in the mail. It wasn't the Blackberry, but it was a check for the amount that would be oh, for why? a Blackberry. Why? Because, he, because yeah. that's Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> that's just who he is. If you, so to use his line, if you ever need anything, yeah. call me. Yeah. That's Steven. Yeah. And uh, another great example, this year I'm in Show Lake, which is one of our offices, and I get a phone call. He goes, it's Rosenfield. He says, uh, where the hell is Show Lake? <laughs> And so I said, I think it's about three hours west of you. He says, oh, no. He says, I'm in Palm Springs. <laughs> but trust me, I did my T5s at 5 this morning or something like yeah. that. And he says this to me. He says, I just want you to know that people are thinking about you. Every once in a while, you might not think that, but think people think about you. And when they think about they think they think good things about you. And I love how your people answer the phone. I love how you guys, you deal with your business and I love you. And that's Steven. Yeah, it and is. that, I don't, I cannot tell you what that means to hear that. Plus, you know, he's sincere. Of course. Yeah, he doesn't just say that to no, you. No, no, not Steven. <laughs> so anyway, that's, yeah. um, 
And I would say those are the major ones for me. Yeah. So interesting. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed Howard's story and how certain people really influenced his thinking, his ideas, and and his decision to go into public practice. Uh, the two little things I want to add to that is something I think we tend to forget if we are in a position of being a, a business owner and especially if you are in public practice, I think sometimes we tend to underestimate or underthink the value of the influence we may have on other people around us. So Howard just shared a few ideas of the people who had influence on him, but I'd be willing to bet that those people probably didn't even know to what extent they played a part in the career that Howard chose for himself and how they impacted his life. And in doing that interview with Howard, I found it interesting on how many people's lives we may touch every day without us even knowing it. So I think we gotta take that responsibility uh, seriously. It's a little bit like Spider-Man, with great powers come great responsibility. I think it's a little bit of that. And I think we mustn't forget that uh, whenever we take on the role of leading a team and helping people out with their businesses. And um, it's, it's, it's rewarding as heck to know that you can have such an impact, but also a little bit scary. And the second point I wanted to make is don't forget to thank the people who may have touched your lives in a special way. Um, I found myself too often discovering people who passed away and I never got an opportunity to really thank them for what they contributed to my life. And it's an opportunity I'll never get back again and I find that is extremely sad to know that these people left this earth without them ever knowing the profound impact they had on my life, on my career, on the decisions I made. And oftentimes it's not grandiose things that they would have done, it's these little things they would have said throughout our lives that really changed and influenced where we went with our lives and the decisions we've made. And something that I've learned from that is I'm a little bit more conscious of that now and making a bigger effort to tell the people who actually had an impact on me the extent of the impact they had on me. Um, because I'd rather tell them while they're still alive than simply put it out there to strangers. So if there are people in your lives that you think deserve a thank you for the positive impact, may I suggest that you don't procrastinate because you never know when you or they will leave this earth and it will go without an opportunity for you to have done so. Um, and don't procrastinate, I would suggest you do it today. You take a few minutes, you pick up the phone or email them, whatever way is best for you. Um, I would prefer to do it by phone so that they can really um, have a sense of what's in your heart. So don't pass up that opportunity. It'll only come once. Thank you. And of course, don't forget if you liked, signify that you liked it. If you we would appreciate you subscribing. And don't forget to work on your practice more than you do in your practice.